Hello and welcome everyone to Stories from the Wonderland of Female Reputation. My name is Susanne Müller-Zantorp, founder and chairwoman of CEO Positions, and I will be speaking in English to you. Now, my slot is 30 minutes of presentation, and then we continue for Q&A session on a different platform. I will be um, having help from Simone Menne and Laura Nigenda and presenting short video in my main uh, slot right here. All right, so uh, who am I? As an uh, ex-journalist turned analyst turned investor relations professional in two large global organizations, I became an entrepreneur again 14 years ago, and I'm now an advisor to chief executives, uh, management teams, interesting people like you and me, and maybe one or two celebrities. We work together on positioning, reputation, and strategic communication. And it would be um, wrong to say that I have um, not a very interesting life on a couple of sites. So my life in thin air in the boardroom has um, a parallel in thin air in the mountains. I'm, um, I'm a passionate mountaineer. I love high altitude. I love in particular areas above 8,000 meters. And um, some call it the death zone, the Todeszone. If you would like to know more, there is um, my blog, Boardroom to Basecamp. So consequently, my motto is um, the better you are grounded, the higher you can go. And this is something that really, really deeply sits inside my heart and helps me to be a good advisor. Um, on the other hand side is my knowledge in computer science and linguistics. Okay, so before we enter the Wonderland, what is reputation? Reputation uh, comes from Latin reputare, calculate and consider. And we can now calculate reputation 2000 years ago thanks to analytics, really nice, because actually um, reputation is everything that other people say about you without you knowing it. And maybe you have never even met the person who knows so much about you. So reputation is something really interesting, indirect, and looks as if it couldn't be controlled by the person who does have a reputation for something. But this for something is actually the opportunity, because this is something that we can control, each of us can control, this for something. Now, you are positioned in the right way when the right people come to you for the right reason, almost by themselves, and buy what you can offer and pay you adequately for your products and services. This is when everything falls into place. And how everything falls into place, that's a consulting process, it's a workshop process, it's very interesting, it's very um, funny and entertaining and e extremely helpful um, to do strategic messaging um, for even very large companies. But um, that's the, the, the serious side of it. So let's have some fun and let's talk behind people back, pe behind people's back. All right, so we start with Tina Müller. Now here we enter the Wonderland. The Wonderland of female reputation, Tina, a good communications expert, um, is accused of promoting herself too much. So she's been making a big splash about herself, celebrating her own achievements all along. FRZ in Germany doesn't like that. And here we go and see Miriam Meckel, the editor in chief of Wirtschaftswoche. Same fate, although she's on the side of the journalists. Frau Nimmersat, her burnout, she even sells her burnout profitably in form of a very personal book. A couple of years ago, ihr Problem ist die Gier. She is greedy. Then we have Jennifer Morgan. You heard SAP talking this morning. The former co-CEO at SAP, she was in that position for only six months. After, after that, she was fired. And my friend Eva Müller, a journalist at Money Manager magazine, wrote two pages about why 
did she lose out to her colleague Christian Klein? Very interesting, very instructive, um, worth reading because we, you can learn a lot how to how to lose out uh, after such a short time. And it has a lot to do with communication. Then we have Cheryl Zandberg, and they say that Mark Zuckerberg blames her for this year's problem. Um, if you if you watch the news closely, she is very much in the background in the meantime, and he took control. So there may be something to it. And someone who almost completely um, disappeared is Marissa Maya, the ex CEO of, of Yahoo, a case study in poor leadership, the least likable woman in tech. So. What happens? What is going on here? Why are these women treated so badly? My friend and gifted journalist, Nicolina Kastinic, says the phenomenon of sensationalism is not new. Even the gladiator fights in ancient Rome were this phenomenon of sensationalism and looking at each other, observing and comparing. And she notes that women have it harder when they make themselves hurt. And she points towards former Germany's next top model candidates who are seen as narcissistic self-promoters. Nicolina recommends that you must offer a glimpse behind the scenes time and again. And with this, she points toward a very, towards a very interesting um, element of communication, um, which is the personal side of things. And this leads me to showing you the model that we use when we put together communication strategies for these times of social media and online media and um, talks about gender, race, um, environmental issues and corporate performance at the same time. We have basically, we see three sides of communication content. One is on the agentic side. You have to present your competence, your economic success. You have to be proficient in the numbers, pursuit of own goals. This is extremely important. You also have, and this is relatively new, you also have to be very, very good in terms of your communal side, which is your morality, your warmth your friendliness, fairness, trustworthiness. And then we have a third uh, component, which is the expressive side of you, um, the emotional attractiveness, authenticity, fascination, sympathy, uniqueness. You have to be uniqueness. You have to be charismatic. Now, women who tend towards one side only are running into problems. If you are only on the agentic side, um, you have a similar fate like Cheryl Sandberg. If you're too much on the communal side, you forget about strategy, you may experience what Morgan, uh, Jennifer Morgan has experienced. And if you're too much on the expressive side, then you should go to and do six second videos on TikTok, but um, that's a different business model. Now, um, there is one woman I would like to talk to you about um, that combines all these three elements in a wonderful way, and she's absolutely brilliant in it. And this is Bea Knecht. Bea is the CEO of Zatu, the um, IPTV provider. She brought television to the internet um, already in 1995, I think, and then in 2005, just recently sold the firm for um, a large amount of money, but only partially. Now, Bea, and you see here a very beautiful woman um, in very female clothing, has something very interesting in her biography. Uh, because um, in the midst of her term as CEO and founder of Zatu, she changed sex. So the founder was a man and now she's a woman. So she travels both worlds, and maybe this is what enables her to communicate so beautifully and so holistically all these three sides, the agentic, the communal, and the expressive side. And there is another person I would like to um, show you, and um, I have interviewed her, 
who is Simone Melle, um, a wonderful woman. And we have this video of Simone now, please, from um, the control room. Active in front or behind the scenes? How do you get ahead? So you, you have to play before and behind the scenes uh, because, uh, uh, of course, it is necessary that there is an image of yourself, myself, in public uh, where I am known for my expertise in digitalization, I'm known for my expertise in finance, uh, I'm also known for being outspoken. Mm -hmm. uh, that is that is the picture I I I show in mm -hmm. public before the scenes, um, and behind the scenes um, it is more the play. Uh, how do you do certain decisions in in a supervisory board? Well, it is important to be authentic, uh, and it's also important to speak out. Uh, and uh, it is still the case that uh, young women take themselves back, also older ones still, also even quite high-ranked high women uh, are always speaking in possibilities and not in facts. If I could think that I believe that I probably may do that job, uh, and the man will say, of course I do the job, and, and then the decision maker takes the man uh, so it's very important for young women to, to speak out and say clearly what they want. Uh, but don't do that in this uh, childish or bossy way. And, and that is the balancing act. Uh, but uh, it's important to know what you want and then to speak out and follow this way. Yeah, so Simone Mendes' book recommendation is Nero Loy. And um, if you like, I can send you um, all the books that will be recommended here. Now, let's move on. And I'll show you now seven principles of successful reputation building or positioning. And these are absolutely gender neutral. Now, we start with the number one. Number one is remain true to your own communicative identity. If you are an introvert and you would think of forcing yourself um, recording a video every week and putting it online, um, you won't be a happy person because you are um, an introvert. So stay true to yourself here and find your own format. There are formats for introverts. Second, sorry, consider the dominance of body language. Body language always wins. It wins even over video. It wins um, big time um, in live performances and in personal meetings. There is 10,000 facial expressions that a face has, so a lot comes across, including voice. We have a lot of voice trainings just recently because people hear themselves on video for the first time many. Now, number three, when you are too tired to send out that newsletter in the evening, then perhaps you are not too tired, but you are dealing with your own inner resistance to reach out. And actually, dealing with resistance is a very, very hard thing. I know it personally really, really well. Um, yeah, deal with it. Number four, what makes a good message? Um, three elements. An element of information, context, why, and proof points, yeah? If you have all three, you will find attention, understanding, and trust. And this is great for strategic messages or for strategic tweets. And there is an individual in the US who tries to do that and has mastered the art um, by sending out hundreds of tweets um, every day or every 24 hours. And um, yeah, it, it works well. It works. Um, for good or for bad, but it does it. Anyway, let's move on. Now, number five, your effect on the market must be sufficient, which is um, your public footprint has to be um, high enough to be seen at all. We have benchmarks and lot of, lots of data in our database about public presence, and this is a short excerpt here, and you see 
on the lower end you see the women and on the higher end you see the men and it's just a shame because the women risk of not being hurt and the men risk of being hurt too much so let's get louder i think that is the motto of the women power congress and the data confirms it now number six um find your channel where is your target group you cannot send out newsletters if your people don't read newsletters so even if you are a writer and this is a seemingly contradictory to what i said in the first place in principle one but there is always good compromise number six <laughs> sorry again volume is not reputation so that person i mentioned with those uh, hundreds of tweets this is volume this is not reputation how do you do it how do you take care of your reputation so i have for example my online profiles where i'm just authentically portraying what i've done so far and I have quite a good network, for example, on LinkedIn, I'm looking for, you know, uh, interesting contacts in my network who have um, a similar background. And as I'm going into health promotion more and more, I'm looking into, you know, role models, uh, be it people or companies which have succeeded and often i'm seeing that they're promoting themselves very well and so i'm looking to that and um yeah i'm also networking offline in the sense of telling people what i'm up to these days where i'm going and you know portraying that i have goals and i'm going in a new direction and um, building up, so to speak, a new reputation in that field where it's relevant. Thanks a lot, Mara. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna. <laughs> okay, so that was Laura. She's learning it more and more, how not to do only good things, but to talk about it. And it's, it's really not so easy. So, um, yeah, to, learn, to know more about the practical side of it, I would invite you to transition to, with me to the Q&A room on WebEx. And you find the login here multiple times. Um, there is also my contact address and website. If you would like to get in touch, um, I'd really be happy about it and ask lots of questions now. Um, in the Q&A. There will also be a slide with the book recommendations. I'm, I apologize a bit for not having them here, but um, all the women gave me book recommendations. So um, yeah, see you soon in the uh, Q&A on WebEx. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.